Hi all, today we are going to discuss about need and types of transmission line protection. So, transmission line and fader are generally used interchangeably. So, let us see what is the meaning of the fader. So, fader is a connecting link between two circuits. So, if two circuits are connected together because they are connected by some the line, so that line is generally called as fader. That means the fader can be either transmission line that is either short, medium or long transmission line or even distribution line even that is also called as fader because it is feeding to something or connecting between two circuits. So that's why we interchangeably use the transmission line and fader terms commonly because the distribution line is also called as fader transmission and also fader but generally for distribution lines the protection is not done distribution lines are generally protected by only using the fuses only in most of the cases due to economic concern because the cost concern is a major concern for distribution lines and the stability is not a major factor for the case of distribution lines that's why generally they are protected by fuses only and the protection is mainly done for the case of transmission line and only for the primary distribution which also we can call as the transmission line only so that's why in coming lectures we are going to interchangeably use the transmission lines or fader terms together. So, uh, let us go with start with the transmission lines. So, as the transmission lines are laid over long distances and exposed to the atmosphere because starting from generating station up to the distribution line, they are transmitted over long distances in kilometers. So, they are exposed to atmosphere and they are very long. So, the probability of falls will be more in transmission lines when compared to any other parts of your power system. So, the main requirement of the transmission line protection are, so if you are taking your transmission line, let us take for example, I am taking singly fed system, there is an alternator or a generating station. So, generating station is fed like this. So, there may be some parallel feders also some at some place. So, let us assume, I am just representing these things by A, B, C, uh, like for example. So, let us assume the fault has happened here. So, whenever the fault happened here, I want my circuit breaker at point B should operate first because so that the other part of the system is not disconnect, uh, disconnected and the stability of the system is not affected. Let us assume if the circuit breaker at B is not operated, then only for the backup the circuit breaker at point A should be operated. Similar is the case, let us assume my fault has happened here. So, there will be circuit breaker here also, here also. So, this circuit breaker should operate first. If this circuit breaker does not operate, then only the circuit breaker at point B should operate. If this also does not operate, then only A should operate. So, that only small part of your system will be disconnected and it is not going to affect the stability of the system. So, same thing I have discussed here. In the event of short circuit, the circuit breaker nearest to the fault should only open and the remaining circuit breaker should not open. If the breaker nearest to the fault fails to open, then backup protection should be provided by the adjacent circuit breakers so that your system will not damage. Always the backup protection is required. So, the relay operating time should be minimum so that the system stability is not affected. So, what are the different types of protections that are used? The different type of protections can be broadly categorized into two types. One is a non-unit type and second one is unit type. Unit type means one particular part of your transmission line or a particular zone of a transmission line is protected. So, this unit types include pilot wire differential protection. We have seen the differential protection in our module number three. Differential protection, what we do? The difference between two points. If you are taking a line, so, at this point also CT will be there, at this point CT will be there. So, this is protected using the differential protection. So, now what happens? This will be my protected zone. So, as only some part of your system is protected or it will respond only to the faults that happens in a particular part of the system, that is why it is called as a unit because it will operate only in this zone or the unit. So, there are two types in this pilot wire differential protection or carrier current differential protection. We are going to see the details soon. And coming to the non-unit type, non-unit type, their protection is not limited to a particular zone or area because it can expand up to a longer distance. They include time or current graded overcurrent protection and distance protection. And the selection of a particular type of scheme for protection mainly depends on the economic justifiability of the scheme 
to ensure the continuity of supply. Let us take for example, if you are going for the low voltage systems, low voltage systems, I cannot you know, use cost for the circuit breakers. So generally what we do, we go for HRC fuses only because fuses also can protect against the all current protection because they can also provide the sufficient protection and wherever you can invest the proper money then we go for circuit breakers because circuit breakers the advantages they are reusability is there multiple advantages are there so those things in detail we are going to discuss in circuit breaker section so now the next one type of the fader whether the faders are radial or the ring main types it depends on that also then availability of the pilot wires whether the pilot wires that much cost we can afford or not so that also it depends on that and the number of switching stations in series between supply end and far end of the system then whether system earthing is provided or not that means whether neutral is grounded or not grounded even that also decides this and a time graded over current protection is generally employed for backup protection of large transmission systems or where a time lag is permitted and instantaneous operation is not necessary so and it is mainly used in distribution faders in coordination with the fuses whereas in the case of long transmission lines or long lines we use it as a backup protection only so these are also employed for the protection of against the ground falls the main reason why we don't use the overcurrent relays for long transmission lines is they are affected by the type of the fault and the source impedance that means whenever you are increasing your system capacity then again you have to change the settings or replace your over current relay that is the first disadvantage and second disadvantage is they are usually affected by the type of the fault so we cannot fix the value of the current very easily so you can just observe from here so if you are taking your transmission line let us assume zs is my source impedance so your relay is here which is sensing it so whenever the fault happens out of all the faults three phase faults are the most severe so the fault current at your source as you are going away how much fault current will pass because as the distance is increasing the amount of fault current will be equal to supply voltage divided by impedance up to that point so impedance up to that point will be zs plus impedance up to that point of your transmission line so if you are taking at your generating station for the three phase fault because it is most severe or the impedance will be minimum so e by zs will be very high whereas if it is a line to line to ground fault it is lesser than that and line to ground fault is much more lesser than that let us assume i have set my fault current or your over current relay to operate for this value ipu this is the value of current that is set by your over current relay so this is your set value of the current that means it will operate if the current is greater than or equal to this current so in that case you can see as a as you are going away or far from your transmission line you can see the amount of fault current is decreasing and they are intersecting with this fault current at some point or your set current at some point that means if you are using the over current relay for line to ground fault it can only protect up to b1 whereas line to line to ground fault it can protect up to b whereas for the case of three phase faults it can protect up to b2 so this is the problem of going for the over current relays and second problem is whenever you change the system capacity because it is mainly depending on the current only whenever the system capacity is changed or your source impedance or the impedance of anything is changed then automatically it is going to affect it so that problem is not there for the case of distance protection so if you want to know the details about this you can please refer to the distance protection in module number three there i have discussed these concepts in detail so now the distance protection is a high speed protection and is not affected by the type of the fault whichever is the type of the fault it will sense in the similar manner and the current trend is to use the static distance protection for all type of line faults that line faults can be either phase to phase fault or phase to ground faults as both main and backup for short medium on long transmission lines so out of these type of distance relays the different relays that are used are reactance type is preferred for short transmission lines impedance type is preferred for medium lines and more relays are preferred for long transmission lines so what is the reason for these things this also we have discussed in module number three in distance relays you can please refer there if you want to know in details then coming to the pilot wire protection the pilot wire protection is a unit type protection scheme in which we would operate only for the faults occurring in a protected zone so what we do let us take for example there is a transmission line these are two points so i want to protect these two points so what i will do there will be a relay here there will be a relay here so these two relays are connected in 
current balance or voltage balance scheme. So there are two types of scheme. So we have already discussed in the differential protections. So here the relay will be operated. So this wherever the relay is there, this relay is connected in between the pilot wires. So here these pilot wires are required. And this will be my protected zone. So that means your relay will sense the fault only if the fault happens within protected zone. But the major disadvantage of going for the pilot wire protection is you need a separate pilot wires so which is very costly affair and you have to run along with your transmission line. So that is a major disadvantage of this. That's why this pilot wire protection is only used for the case of short transmission lines. Because for the case of short transmission and the length is less, so automatically cost of pilot wires is less. So they can be used there. Now coming to for the long transmission lines or interconnected lines, we prefer to go for either carrier and microwave pilot protection schemes are used for the case of long transmission lines and interconnected lines and they will simultaneously operate the circuit breaker set both ends whenever the fault comes. So generally the common trend is to use for greater than 220 kV the lines are generally equipped with the carrier protection scheme or we go for high speed distance relays are used particularly for long transmission lines we go for the more relays. Now coming to the lines around 33 kV lines so they are preferred with the directional time lag over current relays or we go for high speed distance relays it depends on the particular type of conditions and what are the parameters I have told you what parameters we have to consider while designing. Now coming to the 11 kV radial feeders or lower voltage than 11 kV so generally they are provided with time lag over current relays and they are supplemented sometimes by the instantaneous relays and sometimes only HRC fuses are used due to the economic considerations that means from the cost considerations and one more parameter that is there is in the case of transmission lines generally we go for auto recloser because the reason is generally whichever fault happens the fault will be disconnected within a very lesser time. So most of the faults in EHV lines are caused by lightning or the switching transients only. So this leads to flash over across the insulators and exist only for short duration. Therefore, instantaneous recloser is done in EHV lines in 12 cycles. That means after 12 cycles of your supply, we do the recloser and more than one recloser is not recommended from the stability point of view. That means whenever your circuit breaker is open, after 12 cycles, we will close the circuit breaker automatically and if again your circuit breaker is open, then we will not close your circuit breaker again because that leads to the stability problems. But on the lines up to 33 kV, most of the faults are caused due to external objects such as tree branches etc. So this is due to the less height of the folds compared to the adjacent trees. So the external objects may not clear at the first recloser and may require additional reclosers. That's why usually three reclosers at 15 to 120 seconds interval are made to clear the faults. Even after three reclosers, if the fault is not cleared, that indicates it is a permanent fault and after that recloser is not done. Whereas if you go for the cables, generally the cables faults will be the permanent faults only. So for the case of cables, the recloser is not done. So I hope the basic need for the protection of the transmission lines and what are the different types of transmission line protection are clear to you. So next class onwards, we are going to start each one of these protection schemes in detail and after completing every 3-4 lectures, I will update the material in the link that is provided in the description of the video. So the link is provided, Google Drive link is provided in the description of the video. You can download the material from there. I will upload after completing every 3-4 lectures and whatever modules are completed till now, that material is already updated there. You can please download the material from the link in the description of video. I hope everything is clear now. So if you still have any queries, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. I will answer to your queries from there. Thank you. Thank you very much.